Okay, <coughs> we have over on this side we have granulated granulated paste. Now, granulated paste is just your packet paste. Okay, dry granules can have any name you like on there. Right. <coughs> on the other side, we have. <coughs> excuse me. In my view, one of the best of the lot, tub paste. Right. One is ready mixed, the other you have to mix it. Okay. Believe it or not, there are a lot of people out there that still, after years, don't know how to mix this. End up with lumps, straining it through cheesecloth, um, whatever, egg whisks, what have you. If somebody with that, if they mix it, say with an egg whisk, you actually aerate the paste. So when you brush it on the back of the paper, you've got a million little bubbles. And when you put that on the wall, these bubbles have a very bad habit of all coming together. Now, believe it or not, you have different types of bubble. I'm not talking about big ones and little ones. Some of them I've seen are very big. The thing is that we have bubbles that, one, are caused just by not brushing properly. You know, you brush there, you brush there, and you brush there, and you don't brush in the middle, you've got a bubble. That's the one that you play with and get rid of it. Okay. Then you've got what we call pear-shaped bubbles. If they're like a pear, if you put your thumb in the middle of that bubble, I will guarantee there will be a grain of dirt. Because that little grain of dirt is stopping it from hitting. So, then you've got the long narrow bubbles. So, you know, each bubble tells me, one, whether the walls have been sized. Because I've seen guys, they hang the paper and within an hour you've got these bubbles all over the place. And when you really look at it, the bubbles are where the plaster is. Because as the paper dries, and this is the reason why the preparation has got to be so good, as the paper dries, it's the paste that's drying, but the moisture is in the paper, it virtually sucks itself to the wall. And that is why if there is a, a reasonable gouge on the wall or the hair out of a brush, the paper actually sucks itself around this and you can see all these imperfections. The thinner the paper and the shinier the paper, the worse it happens. So, you know, sometimes I wonder why the hell I'm in more paper because there are so many variables. You know, it'd be great if you could just go and slap paste there, bang, on the wall. Is it great? But you can't. Right. Granulated paste mixed properly is what we call high on water. Very high on water content, but very low on tack. Now, what we mean by tack is this. If I pasted that piece of paper with a granulated paste and put my hand in the middle and lifted it up, all I would have is a hand mark on there and a wet hand. No tack. Okay. Whereas your tub paste is the total reverse. It's high on tack and low on water. Now, that is why your tub paste is so much better because there's not so much water 
to be sucked in. And if I pasted that piece of paper with the tub paste, put my hand in there, I would literally lift the piece of paper up because that's the tackability of the product. Okay? They both dry, but the, ta the, the tub paste will dry just a little bit quicker. And talking about drying paste, one thing you never, ever, ever, ever do, and that is force dry your product. What I mean by force drying, any form of heat, any form of heat, including the sun, never put a heater in the room to dry it out. Because as soon as you do that, your joints will just go bing and open. So, never. And that goes for the dehumidifier. A dehumidifier is designed to suck moisture out of the air. You've got 30 litres of water on your walls behind the wallpaper. Sucks that out, bing, your joints will open. So, never, ever force dry your paper. I don't know whether you've ever, ever struck this, but I have where I've gone to see a problem and you say to the lady of the house, uh, did you put a heater in the room? Oh, we, we lit the log fire and round behind the log fire, about 500 down from the ceiling, all the joins had opened because all the heat goes up and that's where it'll open. Okay, so... Sorry about that. Tub paste. Can I just ask you, so that's only when it's curing, is that right? Only, that's only when the glue is curing. Yes. Yep. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you ever get that happen? You know, yes. Can yes. That, that can happen. Uh, joins can open and caused by other problems than heat. But heat will open them first. And even the sun. You know, I've, I've seen guys... New house, they've papered the walls, they've gone home, and in Christchurch on the hill, for example, around about five o'clock it gets ten times hotter, and the sun just coming in through the windows cooks the wallpaper. So all they had to do was put sheets up on the windows, stop the heat. So, so tub paste is, as I said, pre-mixed. And this is a good one because it comes in its own little bag. Okay, so that's the thickness of it. It's quite good. Uh, you can roll that, you can brush it, you can do what you like with it. It's a perfect paste. And that does not have to be used only on um, non-woven or pasteable product. You can use this on any product you like. Okay. Yes. Money. <laughs> um, The granulated paste has been around for years and years and years and years and a lot of the tradespeople, that's what I've used for, you know, for years and I like it and that's what I will use. Um, what I have found is the, the tradespeople in New Zealand are very, very slow in changing. Okay. Um, I've got one particular wallpaper that I've used for years. Yeah. Sure stuff, which you can just buy at Rosane. Yeah. Um, the, the ready mixed one that you say is superior, once it's been opened, can you keep it? Oh, hell yeah. So it'll yeah. keep? Keep it for weeks. For weeks? Yeah. But not months. Right. Yeah. As long as the top is on and sealed, sealed. <coughs> it'll keep going. <coughs> Excuse me. So in, in New Zealand, it's, it's a lot to do with what I have used in the past and I mean 
We'll talk about the, the non-woven product later, but there is so many tradesmen who won't hang it. The ready-made one. So the ready-made one, do they sometimes come in different consistencies? Because uh, that one that you showed us then that was in the plastic bag looked like it was the perfect consistency, yeah. but I've seen it come in a tub and it's actually a lot thicker. It yeah. almost needs to be watered down yeah. a bit. Um, okay, this, this is totally up to, the, up to the paper hanger, but if he or she opens a paste and if they have the experience, they will know it's too thick mm -hmm. and they know what to do. If it is too thick and they carry on and use it, then it's on them, pretty much. Because when, when you get a paper hanger, you, you don't only get his skill, you get his knowledge as well. And if he's been in the game for a certain length of time, then all of these things he should know. Should. I've certainly had paper hangers just in this last year vary hugely. <laughs> well, my advice is that if you find yourself a good paper hanger, chain him to the bed. <laughs> Put a stake in the garden or something and chain him there. Don't let him go. I had a big job in Fisher Avenue, a big job. There was wallpaper right through the house and we used a company that was highly recommended by the wallpaper supplier mm. here. And Didn't work. With respect, every, every tradesman has a bad day. But when he has three bad days in a row, then you worry. I got the same company out to look at another job and what they said they couldn't do and actually emulate that Malcolm recommended a guy and he came out and just nailed it. Mm. It was just like... Like to say, it's just experience and, and used to be handling different products. This yep. particular product had glass beads on it, yep. which a lot of you ladies probably use from time to time. And honestly, the glass beads it can be a disaster, or it can be yeah. The the the, the glass bead type product, um, quite simple to hang, as far as the product is concerned. The the biggest problem is cutting it. it plays hell with your knife cutting through the beads mm -hmm. or your scissors. And the, the first place that came out said that they could not put the glass bead of wallpaper above wood panelling in an entrance way because where it went round the four corners, they said, wait for it, they would have to put a painted bead of timber down in the corner because they couldn't put it around the corner. <laughs> no, <laughs> Please, please, please. Second guy came out from Angelate. Nailed it. Beautiful job. We'll, we'll talk about going round corners and keeping matches and what have you after Smoko, but <coughs> you, you will all have your horror stories of Bill Smith or Harry James or whoever that's come and been hanging paper for 300 years and, you know, I'm good. But... The only, the sad bit is the only way you know that a guy knows what he's doing is when he's done it. Unless you have actually seen his work and say, would you do some for me? There is no register that you can go to in New Zealand and say, these guys are the best. These guys not so good, forget these guys. And there's nothing like that. Unfortunately, <coughs> in Christchurch, over the last few years, we have had such an influx of so-called tradespeople, not only in decorating, but across the whole board. And these people, luckily, a lot of them have actually gone back to where they came from. But there is still a few that want to make Christchurch home. So, as you say, getting a reputable company doesn't always work because that reputable company is only as good as the person that's on your job 
and there's no way until they start that you know. And that's why I like doing these sessions for you people, because it gives you knowledge. And you know where you stand. And you know where you stand. Mm -hmm. And this, this to me, is, is one of the, the beauties. Okay?